Hi, this is Stephen V2, and I wanted to add some commentary to this uh, 2.75D demo that I generally show to people in person, and, because I thought you might need a little bit of commentary to understand what's going on. And I call this uh, technique 2.75D because it was based on a 2.5D technique that was used in the film The Kid Stays in Its Picture, which I happened to see the same summer that Cassini arrived at Saturn. And when... <sighs> Cassini did arrive and I saw those first photographs. I wanted to make a film, but of course I couldn't get an IMAX camera to Saturn, so I had to figure out which one of these techniques, CGI, Ken Burns, this 2.5D, would work for uh, preserving the integrity of those photographs. So for this demo, I've taken a very simple black and white uh, Cassini photograph that's a relatively simple, that's a good illustration of uh, what I might be able to do. Of course, the standard way that stuff is done is generally with uh, 3D CGI. This is a couple of examples that uh, have been done recently. Very high quality stuff, but when you look at it side by side to the photographs, it's just not real. And my goal of this film is to bring the real photographs um, to the screen. And some of it is fairly pleasing, but it just lacks the, the realness that comes from the light hitting all those individual ring particles and the way that uh, light behaves around Saturn that the photographs capture, but it's really, you know, if you actually modeled every single ring particle, it would be very difficult. So the standard approach is Ken Burns animation, which is done with photographs. And when you're first zooming into an object, it looks very nice, but as, as you get close, the image breaks up, you don't get any sense of depth, and a lot of artifacts from the scaling start to occur and uh, it is a nice technique when you're gently zooming in slightly to a photograph but it really doesn't give you the feeling that 3D animation does of really being in the space and really feeling like you're a uh, part of what's doing it. So I begin working on this 2.5D animation and you'll notice now that the moon is moving independently of the background and a very nice effect, but a couple of problems. First, you'll notice that the moon starts to lose its round shape with this particular technique, and then I really couldn't do anything with the rings. They proved to be very problematic, and you're kind of stuck with Saturn still being in a kind of Ken Burns mode, and though the moon effect was working well, except for the elongation issue, I knew that this would not be a satisfactory technique for uh, trying to bring this film to life. So I started working on the rings. Here's a couple of first attempts, and believe it or not, as ugly as this looks, I worked a long time trying to, to, to figure out if this, this particular idea, and this is still using that 2.5D technique and some variations. Here was a later attempt after many months of work, and when I was doing the the initial work, I thought this was look very good, but as you can see, it just was horrendous. Finally, I came up with this. The first thing that you should notice is that the rings are extending beyond the edge of the photograph, and that the moon is passing by the camera, retaining its round shape with the details clearly visible on the surface of the moon. And of course, the, the star of the show at Saturn is Saturn's rings, and that was the focus of this work was to make the ring fly-through feeling in the photograph work seamlessly and keeping the visual integrity of the photographs and of the rings and you'll notice that of course you can see all this tiny detail in the rings the proper transparency in the rings and I was just very excited to be able to achieve this effect and it was a tremendous amount of work but it's something that I, I think will really wow audiences is when they're able to experience this feeling and the thing to keep in mind this is a photograph that's being brought to life there is no 3d cgi modeling here at all it's a it's actually a series of photographs that i figured out how to join seamlessly to produce this effect and they're all cassini photographs so and Later footage that Cassini has been taken recently has very much validated because the transparency uh, works. Here is a couple of other quick examples of some stuff from the trailer that you can see the original photograph and then the uh, fly-through effect. Um, here's a, another one that's a little longer 
that you can see that the it is the photograph itself that is moving. It's not any rendered model that's been recreated uh, to create the, the motion fly through. And here you can actually see a flying across the rings towards a Titan. That's a shot I uh, was actually just working on. And so actually all of these techniques, depending on the particular needs of the, the, the frame at that particular moment, I'll be using, you know, 2D, 2.5, and 2.75D to, to, to make it work. The trailer is available separately on the DVD, but I just wanted to mention while I'm showing it that uh, despite all the technical stuff involved in bringing these uh, still photographs into full motion, the real message of this film is about why we explore space and talking about it with this idea I have of outside in. The, f the film and the is meant to give people as close an experience of what it would like to be viewing Saturn themselves in person. So by using still photographs on a giant screen at the scale, I'm hoping to capture those feelings. And there's just something about a real photograph that we respond to versus computer-generated images. And so that has been the uh, mission of this effect, is ultimately for a uh, goal that to create an experience for people when they're watching the film. So I hope this little demo was informative, and please don't hesitate to uh, contact me if you have any more questions about it. Thanks very much.